Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Nwoko, your host, as always, every Tuesdays and Thursdays, right here on the Farming Podcast, brought to you by Private Property. I know you're watching this through YouTube, so please subscribe to our channel. Um, you can catch all the videos that we've, re that we've recorded uh, over the past two years or so on the Farming Podcast playlist under the Private Property channel and so please feel free to comment like share subscribe um, give your suggestions of what you would like to see right here on the farming podcast as always we're here to entertain educate and inform you around farming and the industry at large which is agriculture and we bring to you farmers entrepreneurs stakeholders agribusinesses everybody across the value chain to discuss a specific topic around the industry of farming and agriculture. Today, as always, I'm happy to interview females on the podcast because like I say, you know, people keep saying that we don't get enough females. Where are they? Where are they? But I think what the channel is doing is definitely exposing the females that are in farming. And so today we're joined by Homoto Ramato and uh, she is from PKR Farming. She's a farmer based in the East Rand in Brakban to be specific. And the topic for today is, should I quit my job to start farming? Hmm. That's an interesting one, especially in today's economic climate. There are tons of you out there who have green fingers, who want to start farming, especially from a, a commercial or a business element and, you know, uh, graduate somewhat from your farming gardening operations. And so let's hear from Homozo in terms of does she advocate people quitting a job to start farming and maybe share her experience around her farming journey uh, because I know she was a corporate person uh, and now she's obviously moved to working in the fields in the farm. And so, yeah, if you have any questions for Homoto, please feel free to comment. But let's get right, right into the show and welcome her to the podcast. Homoto, thank you so much for joining. How are you doing today and how's the farm looking like? <laughs> Thank you for having me in Bali. Um, I'm good. Um, the farm is okay. It's a little bit quiet because it's winter, but mm. um, the farm is still um, running. Okay, perfect. So word on the street is that, uh, you know, you went into farming simply because uh, you, you used to reminisce your grandmother growing fresh vegetables or produce. Is that true? Yes or no? And uh, why did it take you so long to start farming? <laughs> um, I was raised by my grandmother. Um, and we, we didn't really have a lot. So what happened was we, she would grow vegetables to actually sustain the household. Um, when my mom was away working in the city. Um, so being a loner, I've always been a loner. So I spent, um, most of my time with her. Um, and that, 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 uh, uh sort of, um, made me fall in love with, with farming. Um, that is how the, the whole relationship with uh, farming and my grandmother began. Mm. But more than anything else, it was when I lost my job, it was, it, was, it was really an emotional time. And the decision had to go and come from a very emotional place. And mm. which only made sense that my grandmother was an integral part of uh, me making that decision. Yeah. And so tell me, before you started farming, what were you doing? And then do you have any agricultural experience? Where did you also get the training, if not? Um, before I started farming, I had been with a financial institution for 15 years. Oh, wow. So um, I, had, I had been the, the, the banking girl for 15 years. And um, one day woke up, uh, the company was going under a restructure and some of us had to be let go. Um, but the nice thing that happened with, with my ex-employer was they gave us opportunities to upskill. So when the decision was finally made for me and to go into farming, I was then offered an opportunity to go and upskill where the company would pay for that. Um, with my research, the nearest place that I could find to go and do this was um, Bushle Farming, Farming Academy. It's in uh, Delmas. So I went um, and I did my vegetable production training with them for a good uh, three and a half months. Um, that is where I got my, 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 my training for, for farming. Yeah. And so transitioning from a bank uh, or banking environment for 15 years, that's quite a long time. 
to farming. How was that transition like? Because I know I, I also found difficulties as well, coming from corporate, going into farming. You're dealing with different people uh, in terms of education level, experience, uh, you know, and it, uh, especially when you come from, you used to, where you come from a, uh, an environment where you're working on your laptop, you're sending emails, you're s sitting in air-conditioned offices, uh, you're sending proposals, et, et cetera. So how is that transition from the banking environment or corporate sector into farming? What, some of the, what are some of the difficulties or just experiences that you've learned that has made you to become the farmer that you are today? I think one of the key things that I will always say is coming from um, the corporate environment before the difficulties um, was an advantage because you come from an environment where um, in, in where you had been working previously, you were running a, um, a department, you were responsible for that department being profitable and all that. So it was very easy for me to take the very same learnings and apply them in my farming environment. Mm -hmm. So that was the biggest advantage, having come from that environment where mm -hmm. you had been um, problem solving, um, mm -hmm. um, dealing with, with customer service mm -hmm. and all those things. It became easy for me to take those learnings and apply them into, um, mm -hmm. into my farming journey. And that was the advantage. But the disadvantages were a lot. Um, I think more than anything else, um, the first one that would come to anybody's mind is as a woman, how were you received? So being second guessed by everybody from your employees right up to your customers, where people take chances because you're a woman, the assumption is you don't know anything about farming. Um, so people can walk um, all over you and um, treat you the way that they feel that you need, they needed to treat you or purely because they felt that you didn't belong in there. So it's either you didn't know much or you don't belong there. Um, the, the second one, which was also very um, uh, strenuous for me, um, I'm, I'm, I'm finding a way to navigate that at the moment is to wear multiple hats. So you come from an environment where you had all these stakeholders and resources that were made available to you for you to be successful. Now, all of a sudden, you don't have all those things. You are on your own. So you don't have HR, you are HR on your own, you don't have marketing, you don't have the log logistics mm. team, you are doing all these things on your own. So that is the, the most um, difficult thing that you have to do because one way or the other, you will have to wear these heads mm. and you are on your own when it comes to wearing these heads, unless you then outsource, which is very expensive. Mm. Yeah, and, and, and just over and above just the corporate world going into farming, right? How was also the transition from being an employee to an employer. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I start? Yeah. <laughs> so having, <laughs> having to have um, somebody's kitty for you to, to dip into, to pay yourself and pay people, now all of a sudden is you are the, the mothership. Everybody is looking at you for um, their household um, livelihood. So everything fell, fell upon you. you. You had, I have the most pressure at every day of my life because I know that if I don't make one, two, three, four, five, I've got 10, 15 people that are looking at me to say, but we didn't eat this week, we didn't pay rent this week. So that 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 was the hardest um to to now not be the only person that is important in your life, but now you've got all these other people and their families that have become part of your um your mm -hmm. your, your your responsibilities. That was the hardest. Yeah, and tell, tell us a bit more about PKR farming. So I know that there's a farming element and then now there's farming and services. So firstly, what is it that you're farming and what are the other services um, that you're offering? So at the moment, we're doing vegetable production. So it's just purely um, a farming. Um, but in the, long, in the long run, the idea was to um, take what we, were, uh, we are farming to actually agro uh, process. So what we do at the moment is we do um, different kinds of vegetables. We are doing um, um, spinach. We are doing spring onions. The big one that we are doing is uh, chili. So we've gone into doing uh, different varieties of chilies, which is what is supposed to be the identity of PKR farming going forward mm. to be a purely hot uh, pepper um, farm. That's fantastic. And why specifically chilies? Is, is there any reason? There is reasons. So I'm operating on a five hectare farm. So um, that is relatively um, 
will not be compared to what a normal farm would be termed, which is anything above eight and a half hectares. Um, so the use of the small space to maximize profit is very mm. important for me. Mm. Um, I have done all the other stuff. I have done the cabbages. I have done the beetroots. <laughs> I have done everything else. But when I had to go back and compare mm. the returns on chilies and all these other crops, um, I found that chilies was actually the most profitable okay. and also the idea that you are able to multiple harvest from just one crop if you take care of it really well actually influenced um, that decision. So so um, when we had a hailstorm the last time, mm. um, when everything else recovered and recovered but still had a lot of issues with diseases, chilies recovered and it still stayed firm and produced actually more than what we ex had expected it to to actually wow. produce so that was a very easy decision to actually say um this is the way that we should then focus and continue yeah Homut, i know you said that you were retrenched from a former employer and then you went straight into farming and you know there are a lot of people right now experiencing financial difficulties in their personal income uh in their personal um uh, capacities whether maybe they've been retrenched at work or their salaries have been cut down in half etc cetera, etc cetera. so and then also there's two ways right people go into entrepreneurship because they're forced to in the sense that you know you're retrenched now you have to find alternatives or they go into entrepreneurship because it's been it's it's been their long term passion and they want to pursue something meaningful for them. So now, would you advocate people to quit their jobs to start farming, or would for those that also want to tap into the agri space, maybe that have land at home, etc. What would you advise? Should they quit to start farming, or should they juggle both during the weekends? Or maybe should they stick to their day job? Because everybody, uh, it seems like, just wants to become a farmer. Um, everybody wants to be a farmer. And, and I think most of us, we are to blame for that. Um, because we, we share what, what, what we, 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 we do. And people think that it's easy because we only share only the good stuff. Mm. Um, but when it comes to the decision of having to leave your employee to, 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 to pursue farming, if it is really, really something that you're really passionate about, because the one thing that I will be honest about is it is hard work. It is mm. difficult. Like any other business, it is going to break you. There will be a lot of wins and losses. So you need to be steadfast and be uh, sure that that is really, really what you want to do. And I think one thing that um, I, would, I would really advise a lot of people to do, which I didn't have an opportunity to do, is do your homework before you actually leave. So before you actually have that ex um, exit, just have a, a proper exit plan. Um, for example, if you're going to buy land, make sure that the land is bought before you leave. Because the minute you leave, then you become um, not credit worthy. So you cannot purchase anything because there's no salary coming in. So things like buying, uh, purchasing land must be done beforehand. Um, the other thing is um, you need to know where you're going to do all this to be able to do your, 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 your planning properly. Because you can't just leave and then suddenly say, I'm going to look for land to start farming. All these things need to happen whilst you are still in your employ. So it needs to be part of your exit plan. Your exit plan needs to be very solid. Also, one of the decisions that you really need to make is, are you going to build a farm from scratch or are you going to buy an existing farm? Because I can tell you, building a farm from scratch is really expensive. Mm. Buying a farm that's already um, set up might be a little bit costly, but it's going to save you a lot of headaches. But also, if you're really buying land and setting up your own farm, I think that's my favorite thing to do personally, because it allowed me to build what I want, my vision. I saw my vision coming through to life, and that was, that was the, the, the key thing for me. Mm. Um, and also, the other thing is maybe... Um, don't do this out of out of desperation. I, I had a choice to actually go and fix my CV and go into another bank and look for a job. Mm -hmm. But I had been at a place where I felt that um, it was it was long overdue. After 15 years and this one opportunity presents itself to pursue something that you've always wanted to do. I was not going to let that go. That is exactly what happened to me. But the idea of leaving a job and wanting to go into farming, don't go into it because it's it's fashionable. Go into it because it's something that is very uh, personal to you and it's something that you know for a fact that you can do. Because mm -hmm. one, one day you will be the, the field worker 
one day you will be the driver because the driver didn't preach at work. Are those the kind of things that you are going to be able to handle mm. or you want to have just a business of fun? Mm. So that's, that's, that's how I would actually just go about it. Yeah. What has kept you going through the difficult times? <laughs> I, have, I have a very um, good support system. My mom um, went into a panic when I told her that I was starting my farm business. Yeah. She didn't really understand why my daughter, of all things, would actually go into this. But over time, she's been converted, and she's mm -hmm. my biggest support system. Um, my partner is always, um, she, he's always had my back as well. So um, that's one person when I feel that the world is falling apart, I always go and cry to Yes, we do cry. Yes, <laughs> yes. But, uh, <laughs> it's apart needed. From that, I, <laughs> we do cry a lot. Yes. Apart from that, I have um, um, my friends that are in the industry that mm. um, act as mentors and friends where mm. um, I, I always normally just call it a time out and I drive and I go to my friend's farm. I think we both know the same person, Eric. Um, okay. I yeah. call it time out. Yeah. And I go to Eric's farm and I sit there for the whole day and I vent and all that. Um, but above anything else is... Um, I, I had made a real conscious decision that this is what I am going to do and this is what I'm going to be successful at. Mm. Even though it gets tough, that one um, vision that I have in my mind about where the farm is supposed to be is the thing that keeps me going. I know that it's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be hard. Mm. Um, but um, more than anything else, I love what I do. I enjoy what I do. I don't mm. think I would wake up and do anything else at this point in time. So yeah. that's, that's one of the reasons why I get out of bed every day and still do what I do. Yeah, I think what you're saying is something that we don't often look uh, touch on, you know, the support structures that farmers have just outside of production. You know, I'm not talking about seed reps or bankers or financiers, but it's the people that touch into who we are, you know, because it is emotionally draining because you have to think of so many things for your farm. You've got people, you've got employees that you need to think of. And so we never really um, give gratitude to the individuals that support us from an emotional perspective. And so, Humoto, tell us about wh what's next for PKR farming in the next three to five years. Um, and, and yeah, just wh where are you looking to grow? So, um, as I've mentioned, um, I've, I'm transitioning the farm from being a... Um, um, what people would call a, a, a all, all type of vegetable stock. I'm transition, transitioning from that. I want it to be purely a hot pepper farm. Um, so what, what I'm trying to get to is to be where um, we are doing 80% um, uh, hot peppers and maybe 20% of the other crops that we are still doing as our cash crops. Mm. Um, one thing that we did that was very important for me at the moment is we had never been able to grow hot peppers in winter, but we actually have managed to overwinter our jalapenos. So we still have jalapenos in the field. Um, we still harvesting, they're still producing and all that. So it was very important for me to be able to see that process through. Because when I go into the um, full-time production of hot peppers, I would want to be able to have them in summer and also in winter. But that comes with a cost um, because the ones that have survived are the ones that are undercover in the tunnels. So that means that I have to invest in more tunnels. So, so, so for me, it's just seeing through the, the process of transitioning at the farm to be known as a one-stop um, farm for your uh, hot pepper uh, purchases or supply. Um, and when that has been said and done, obviously then... Um, acquire more land where the business grows and we are able to venture into something else. Yeah, all the success with you uh, and your farm, your operation, especially around hot peppers. I know they are in demand as much as sweet peppers are. And uh, I'm super yeah. excited to be speaking to a farmer that, you know, has obviously walked the journey, but more so is able to think from a more long-term strategic view. And I, I advocate uh, being known for a single crop because that's how you get your brand name um, out to the market much better and much faster. You will be known for hot peppers. And uh, I'm just talking purely uh, from experience there. But thank you so much, Homoto, for your time um, and for, for, for just sharing um, your journey with us here on the podcast. 
Thank you so much for having me, Bali. Thank you. It's a pleasure. If you just catch us well, sorry for you. You've just missed the conversation with Homozo. But good news is that uh, this episode is on the YouTube channel. And so you could play back right to the beginning and get to understand who Homozo Ramato is and um, her farming operations, which is situated all the way in Brakban. She left a corporate career for about 15 years, was retrenched and started farming, and she is thoroughly enjoying it. And she did say that she does not see herself doing anything else. And I think some of the important points that I took from our conversation today is, is that, yes, even though you're thinking of quitting your job to start farming, you need to know the why, right? Why do you want to quit your job to start farming? Is farming your passion? Is farming an opportunity that you're seeing right now in the market that you could create uh, um, a legacy for your family? You just need to know your why. Why should I quit my job? Is this going to serve me? And most importantly, have a team of people and individuals around you that could hold your hand uh, when you know times are tough. And even when they're good, have people to celebrate as well with you, with the, all the milestones and successes that you have achieved. Because Farming is difficult. And I think every single farmer that comes onto the podcast definitely hints that to say, yes, things might look rosy on the outside, but internally on the ground, on the farm, there's so many obstacles that we have to deal with because farmers at the end of the day are business people and running a business is not for the faint hearted. I really hope that you will enjoy this episode if you're just going to watch it right now. But for those of, that, for those of you that have been watching, um, please comment and share this video with as many people as possible because we want to spread the world of agriculture. And like I say every show, if there's any suggestions that you want to have, um, that you have of, of, of guests that you want, to, uh, you want us to bring onto the show and topics that you want us to explore in much detail, please feel free to um, bring those su suggestions forward to us. Well, that's it for me. I will see you on the next episode of the Private Property Farming Podcast. Take care. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, I spoke to him. When was it? On on Tuesday, I think we were talking about um ordering of seats um, because I'm I'm already just trying to to get the the summer planting going. Um, so yeah, we were chit chatting around those. But yeah. Mm -mm. Recording stopped. Why am I giving you happy vibes?